Hello. Uh, I'm about to start The Kiss Quotient by Helen Wong. I'm pretty excited because I've been trying to read some good romances and I have found absolutely nothing. And I've heard a lot of good things about this one. So I'm very hopeful that there's something there that makes me excited about love. Uh, so I've got it here on my iPad and I've got my stress-free music playlist going here, which I will link down below. And so I'm gonna get started reading now. So the quiz quotient, if you don't know what it's about already, it's about um, a woman named Stella, who's a mathematician. She has Asperger's and she has like no interest in romance, but I guess she has a lot of money and she wants to practice uh, with a professional, in this case would be an escort. And so she hires an escort named uh, Michael and he agrees to help her. So I guess they start doing the romance thing, if you catch my drift. And soon she's starting to enjoy the like, kissing and romance and she's starting to, it seems like, fall in love with him though. So, yeah. I just started reading this, like I'm literally like two or three pages in, and all of the books I've been reading recently, the families or friends of the protagonist are always so strongly trying to change the protagonist. Stella's mother here like wants her to be more social, she wants her to like go on more dates and um, meet more men, and so that she can have grandkids. I mean, I'm sure the ultimate goal is that she just wants her daughter to be happy. But it's so annoying to see like her mom being so persistent in this date men, date men, date men. Like having a career isn't good enough. Socialization and having children and like having a family. But that's not always what people want to do. This like concept in society, it's so frustrating to see women be put down because they don't they're not interested in romance and they're not interested in men you know i don't feel the same way as stella but if someone doesn't want to and they're what makes them happy is focusing on their job and stuff like that you shouldn't be pressuring them into these situations like or at least i don't think it's fair to be pressuring people into these situations because it makes them it makes people feel bad it makes people think they're not good enough and they're not doing their role enough even though like she's clearly a successful businesswoman so like it's just putting people down and i really don't like to see it in books like this obviously it's just the beginning of the book so i've got a a, a lot of stuff to get through i'm sure that this isn't gonna be a constant thing but oh, it's so annoying to see it like so constantly in these books like i just read convenience store woman and that book is like the whole theme is a woman's role in society is to be in a relationship and to have a family and to have children you know is to like take care of their husband take care of their children take care of their parents but sometimes women don't want to do that so hopefully this book doesn't focus on that too much for me so i'm on chapter four and it's already way spicier than i thought it was gonna be which i'm not complaining about for some reason i just thought that romances or at least some of the romances that I've read have been kind of boring recently at least, but this one, like they seem to have good chemistry, which is like the only thing that you can pretty much ask for that and like good writing. So it's got both of these so far. And so I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm gonna keep reading.
day. I'm 61% finished through the Kiss Quotient and I'm still liking it so far. The characters still have good chemistry, the writing is still good. There's a very there's a good amount of tension and angst involved. The scene with his mom was very awkward and I think that created a good tension in the book between the two of them and in the family. But then the the resolution also made it better. It made like bonding between the characters and it made me like both of the characters more. I quite like Stella's character, honestly. I like how she's straightforward and honest and that's pretty much all you can ask in someone. And she's obviously a good person, you know? She's not trying to be anything more than what she is. And when she does, she kind of fails miserably, but she knows that. I like that Michael is a tailor because I've never heard of that. A main character being a, a fighter, practice in sword fighting, an escort, and also a tailor and like someone who can make high quality clothing. I think that's really cool. And his personality is cool. I'm interested to see where it's going to go from here because they're still under the impression that they're going to be doing a fake dating thing for a few months and then just get over it as soon as possible. So I want to see how it blows up in their faces. All right, so it is now five o'clock in the afternoon because I took a nap and um, I'm 77% way through the quiz quotient now and I'm gonna head to a cafe because they have the fall um, edition drinks out now. The Tucson place has like a pumpkin frap so I'm gonna give it a try and see how good it is. They also have a pumpkin einspanner, but I don't know if I would like it. I guess I'll decide when I get there. Anyway, um, I'm gonna hopefully do some of my schoolwork because it's difficult and I need to focus on it, but uh, also hoping to finish this tonight as well. Typically like me, I acquired another drink, which is a matcha bubble tea. I finished the kiss quotient. I think that the ending was pretty fine. It seemed pretty simple. I think good enough conclusions were made for me to be satisfied. I think I would rate the book probably four out of five stars because honestly, after like the first 30%, I got kind of bored. Mm, the writing was good the whole way through and I appreciated that but for some reason romances have been boring me recently and so I won't talk the boringness up to the book but my own problem. I would say that it got like it's like 20% the book's problem 80% my problem but overall I liked the relationship and I liked the side characters a lot. I like all of his sisters and his mom and his grandmother and his cousins and finally in the end Stella's mother saved herself from my harsh opinion from the beginning. There was a few things at the end that I wanted to uh, talk about specifically after they the situation blew up in their faces so this will be spoilers just so everybody knows Michael goes to the dry cleaners and he destroys all of his hard work and his designs and all the sketchbooks that he had he just chucked them in the trash can and ripped them up that doesn't make a lot of sense to me it's like you break up with someone and you go into your house and you destroy everything. Why would you do that? That's like, why would you destroy more of your livelihood? I guess he does it to feel better. 
doesn't seem like it would make I wouldn't feel better if that shit happened oh I just broke up with somebody that I love and now I'm gonna go destroy all of the shit that I own that makes tons of sense no it doesn't that makes no sense and he didn't regret any of it so kind of don't get that part it seems a bit dramatic to me <laughs> honestly and then because Stella thinks that M Michael broke up with her because of her autism. She is trying to change herself. I kind of get that, honestly, being bitter about something and being like, screw you, I'm gonna change myself then, like you, but you won't get to see the better part of me uh, after I've changed. I get that, honestly, even though it's a little bit, you know, sad, but then pretty quickly she kind of like, after talking to Janie about Janie's passions in math and economics, she's like, why am I throwing my career in the gutter for a guy who doesn't love me? Like, screw that shit, like, economics makes me happy. And so why would I go about get, getting rid of all the things that make me happy, you know? So she says, there was no point in working to snare a man who didn't love her as she was. No one benefited from that, least of all her. It wasn't fair and it wasn't honest and it wasn't her. This crusade to fix herself was ending right now. She wasn't broken. She saw and interacted with the world in a different way, but that was her. And so, respect on, on her part, you know? Why, why do you need to change yourself from somebody who already, without her knowing, thought she was perfect? So I liked that message a lot. Now that I've finished the kiss quotient, I'm gonna be moving on to the bride test, which I just downloaded. The bride test is about Kai. Uh, who is Quan's brother and Michael's cousin. Um, in the Chris quotient, we learn that Kai's and Quan's mother is kind of intense. Um, so in this book, Kai also has autism. They talked about it a little bit in the first book because I guess Kai and Stella have some of the same traits and so they're kind of similar to one another in uh, some ways. So his own mother wants him to get married as soon as possible and she travels to Vietnam and gets a bride for him and brings her to America to hook them up basically. Um, so I can imagine that Kai's not gonna be happy about that as someone who doesn't want to find love or doesn't really care about love. And I believe the other character's name is Esme. Um, all I know about her is that she's Vietnamese and she is poor. What do we know about Esme? Okay, so we know nothing about Esme from the description. She lives in Ho Chi Minh City, she's mixed race, and she falls in love with Kai, and those are all of the things that we know about her. So I hope that she has some semblance of a personality, um, because it would be tragic if she didn't. I'm going to get started on the bride test, number two. Let's go. Hello, it's Wednesday now. Uh, it is 5.51, please ignore my hair, pretend it doesn't exist. I just finished the bride test and I've been listening to ABBA and I'm waiting to eat this piece of pizza here. My thoughts on the bride test are as follows. First of all, I liked it. There was almost nothing that I would complain about, uh, which I think is a good sign. I enjoyed the writing. I think the writing was similar, of course, since it's the same author uh, as the Kiss Quotient. However, the bride test didn't get boring for me. I was compelled to continue reading it uh, no matter what point I was at. Uh, I wanted to know what was going to happen, and I was interested in what the characters were doing even if it wasn't them together. I think that this story, the plot of the story and the tropes that it was following fell in place the way that uh, I imagined them to. I liked the characters a lot. I think this book also had some quirkiness uh, that was in the first book, but maybe I enjoyed a bit more. There's a few quotes that I wrote down here. First one is when she has a nightmare and she goes into his room and hops onto his lap and he says what the hell did he do he had a crying woman latched onto him like an octopus he didn't help recalling that the blue ringed octopus was one of the most venomous animals in existence don't upset the octopus i thought that was funny <laughs> 
I just like the quirkiness. I like the way the characters interacted with each other and I really liked Esme's character. She was like driven, focused, and um, she wears her heart on her sleeve and she tries hard. She seems to be a good person and a loving mother and daughter. Kai is also those things. He's also like focused, driven, hardworking, uh, loving without saying love, but showing love in other ways. I think the ending was kind of abrupt though. Like she found her dad and the wedding was canceled and that was it. That was it. And then she graduated from Stanford. That was it. And then they were gonna get married in Vegas. But all that was in, put into like five pages. So I think I liked the bride test more than the kiss quotient. Something about the chemistry between the characters I enjoyed more. And the book, the book, the book didn't get boring for me at any point, and I think that's the main thing for me. If the writing is good, like it was here, the characters are good, and the writing is quirky. My main thing is, if I get bored, then it's kind of you know it's just boring. And so this book didn't get bored, and I think that's why I liked it. So, the last book in the Helen Huang saga is the Heart Principle which I believe is about Quan. So honestly, I'm not terribly excited. I don't think Quan is that interesting of a character. Um, so I'm hoping that from his perspective, he is an interesting character. And I'm uh, interested to see what the love interest is like. All right, so The Heart Principle is about a violinist. Her name is Anna Sun. She accidentally achieves career success because of a viral YouTube video, tragic. She finds herself incapacitated and burned out from her attempts to replicate that moment. And when her longtime boyfriend announces that he wants an open relationship before making a final commitment, interesting. Mm. A hurt and angry Anna decides that if he's gonna have an open relationship, she is also gonna have an open relationship, which is the right thing in my opinion, which means she goes on to embark on a string of one night stands, trying to find the baddest boy out there, basically. Uh, and that's where Quan shows up. And they have failed attempts at one night stands because he likes her um, and kind of wants to keep seeing her. He accepts Anna on an unconditional level that she has just started to understand within herself. However, tragedy strikes in her family and she has to help her family but she's gonna break from that responsibility and the hard work that goes along with that and so it's a relationship that they have to fight for all right it's wednesday night let it begin the final book so far as i'm aware of in the helen huang saga the kiss quotient let us begin so it's thursday and I'm 25% finished The Heart Principle. I think I'm on chapter like 10 or 11. So far, it's pretty good. This one is a lot like, not darker, but a bit more seriously toned than the other two. I think it's because both of the main characters are going through stuff that's recently been kind of life-changing or not traumatic, but really life-altering to them. Like Quan has, been sick so he's getting over the sickness and he's coping with the things that have changed within him and how people are acting with him now and just how he's starting to live life normally again but it's not the same way that it used to be before and um anna is like going through a uh, seems like a lot of stress this song this violin song that's been made for her to play and i mean she said it she's a violinist like playing the violin and being a violinist is her life it's her purpose in life and like it's what she loves doing and what she wants to do but right now she's so stuck on something and she can't get past it and she's been trying she just like doesn't know what to do i feel like it's gonna keep building up to something where she's gonna break eventually because it seems like she's been working on this piece for like a month maybe and she practices for like three hours a day that's a lot of time and a lot of messing up and thinking that you're doing poorly so yeah the tone is really a lot more serious in this one so far i think their chemistry is pretty okay i think they might be a good match for each other right now like a fresh fresh chemistry between them that they maybe haven't experienced before maybe because they're both going through something it'll be good for them them to have this kind of
healing experience with each other because they can kind of relate to one another in some ways. I think they kind of jumped into it though, this romance, at least where I'm at, at chapter 10 or 11. It seems like they jumped into it after only talking about nature documentaries, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I hope that it doesn't start off really strong, kind of like the kiss quotient, and then kind of fade into like a little bit of boringness like I, I found the kiss quotient was like. But I think this one, since it's a bit more seriously toned, it won't be as light as I found the kiss quotient, and so I think that's what's gonna uh, carry on my interest in reading it. So it is Friday afternoon now, and I am on chapter 30, which is like 71% through of the Harp Principle. Um, it is not good right now for Anna, like in the book, her current um, life situation is the shittiest as it possibly could be. She's suffering very greatly from uh, mental strains and the responsibilities that her family is placing on her, uh, which is hard to read about. Her family sucks. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it there. Uh, I understand that in this fictional novel they're going through hard things and traumatic things. Uh, that doesn't give you an excuse to be an asshole to your family and to treat them like not a human because that's what her mother and her sister are doing right now. They're treating Anna not like a person. Um, they're deciding things for her, they're telling her what to do, and they're not giving her an opinion on her own life. I don't like her family and I very much don't like her sister. I understand that some people and a lot of people in the world probably have to endure this, have to go through their parents having a really strong role in the decisions of their life. Personally, that's not how I was raised. And so I struggled to conform to that idea more. So this is very hard to read about, very frustrating to read about. A trigger warning about what's happening now and kind of spoilers, I guess, about sickness and death, assisted suicide and mental health, stuff like that. Her dad is clearly suffering very greatly, not physically, but mentally and emotionally. And the only person who has clearly acknowledged this is Anna. And Anna hasn't told her family about it. So her family, if they do know, they're ignoring it, which isn't cool. It's not, it's not cool. Her father can't speak for himself. Physically, it is impossible right now for him to speak for himself. And, and to the same degree, Anna can't stand up for herself or speak for herself at the same time. So it's very ironic and tragic to see that she's the only one who has acknowledged her father's mental struggling and pain right now and there's nothing that either of them can do pretty much to help him end his life because that's what he seemingly has told her that he wants to do and that's probably 
the best option. Um, it's a very sensitive subject to talk about assisted suicide and people who want to die because their life quality isn't good enough for them to be happy more than what they're suffering from. And I think that's the situation that her dad's going through right now. My family has a very similar experience, multiple similar ex experiences to what Anna's going through right now. And so I know exactly how she's feeling in regards to her father, not uh, the other uh, mental uh, issues that she's struggling with right now, like her burnout and kind of the pressure and the very extreme subordination that she has to endure from her mother and her sister. But in terms of her father being sick, I understand. And it's very sad. It's a very sad thing to have to let a family member go. But from my perspective, it's even more sad to have to make them suffer in this situation for the sake of the family. So it's just it's just sad to read about. I, I'm not enjoying reading about it right now. I really dislike her family and Julian, whatever the situation with Julian is. Anything where the main character can't dis can't discuss her own feelings and her own decisions to her family and her family is pushing her to marry this asshole of a guy like Julian. That's not like I pretty much can't even bring myself to care about it because that's like it's Anna. Anna needs to talk about it. It's Anna's problem. Like Anna is the one who will be marrying him in this case. So if she's not choosing or is really finding it difficult to share her feelings with her family, I can't do anything about it. And so I'm not gonna bring myself to care about it because it makes me upset. I'm gaining nothing by reading about how hard she's struggling and how, how she just has to sit there and smile at what her family is telling her to do. I'm not enjoying it. Uh, the book's almost over, so I'm gonna finish the book, but yeah, so far I don't think the relationship aspect is really the main focus of this book. It's it's not a bad thing. I think there is a bit of insta-love in this, but I think the other two books also had some kind of insta-love. There was no real like building of a connection. Um, I don't really see the chemistry between Quan and Anna. I just don't really see a strong romantic connection between them other than what the author is pushing you know i think i don't think he's a bad character in this i i think he is a good character for anna but i don't think that's the main point of the story um more so than this being a book about both of them this is very clearly a book about anna and her issues another thing that i don't uh agree with or understand is when she says that they can't get a nurse or a personal care worker to help them. She tells Quan that like it has to be her and it has to be her family and then there's nothing they can do about it and it's nobody else. Um, that doesn't make any sense at all to me. They went to a hospital in the first place and got support from doctors and nurses. They clearly trust the healthcare system and so I don't know why they wouldn't get additional support from a personal care worker, multiple personal care workers or a nurse or multiple nurses to their house. I don't understand why they see that they have to fulfill the role of a personal care worker if it is causing them a lot of painful, like hard work and grief and anxiety. Clearly, Anna is very strongly suffering from taking care of her father in this like endless, tireless loop of cleaning him and caring for him and feeding him and stuff like that. And so I don't know why she deems it her responsibility to endlessly take care of him. That's what personal care workers are for. They are professionally trained to care for sick people at in, an, in a home environment, not necessarily at a hospital or at a nursing home, they can come to your house. You can be there while they're taking care of, of the, the person who's sick and you don't have to struggle through helping them anymore. Like take the burden off yourself and, and trust your, your family member to a trained professional. Like I don't know what the qualms are about getting a professional worker to assist the family but there seems to be no excuse other than it must be my family. That's not an excuse. That doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe, I, I honestly don't understand. Maybe you don't trust um, a personal care worker to 
help your family member, but then I don't understand why you would also trust nurses or doctors to care for them because that's a personal care worker is trained to do the same thing as nurses in this situation. So, and in this case, Anna's family is clearly very rich so they can afford it. Uh, so the author seems to be just making it the case that to make it difficult, more difficult on Anna and her mom and her sister. There's no reason why they can't hire a personal care worker. And that makes me mad because <laughs> It's, it's affecting Anna, and she's getting worse from it. So, anyway, I'm gonna keep reading and see what happens. Um, the writing isn't bad, and honestly, the story isn't bad, but it's just, it just hurts to see Anna and her father. It also hurts to see her father really struggling through this. And so, I hope it gets better for Anna, um, and I hope that she's able to communicate to her family how she feels, uh, and I hope her family doesn't discount that because she's a person and her family doesn't treat her like a person so i hope that changes soon anyway yeah i'm gonna keep reading and finish it yeah hello so it is friday night and i finished the heart principle the final book uh in this video like a few hours ago maybe around like 4 p.m and you know, after reading the author's note, it wasn't that it changed my perspective on what I thought about initially in the book, uh, but after hearing that Helen Huang like wrote it through kind of what she experienced in her own eyes, like all the some of the things that are mentioned in the book were from her real life experiences, and you know um, that she even felt that it was more true to her to write the book in I because I represented her more strongly than just using she. So clearly the author has some pretty real experiences with the um, things that happened in the book. So I can respect the bravery that it takes to share a story like that and her, her success in recovering uh, from such a traumatizing thing. So I really respect that and can appreciate the story. It's hard to judge a story like that, you know, because I'm not really judging Anna as a character um, because I honestly don't think Anna did many things wrong, but I think that the story lacked a bit. Uh, most specifically, the romance was like not really there. It was definitely a side story to Anna. Um, I feel bad for Quan, but honestly, I wasn't super interested in his story. Uh, as a character, like learning about him from the first two books, I honestly wasn't too interested. Actually, it wasn't really much of a disappointment, frankly, at all. I think he got a little bit of screen time. I'm glad that he succeeded in whatever. I think a lot of the romance took place off screen, you know? Like, and so it was really hard for me to kind of care about the characters as a couple, you know? Separately, I cared about them, but as a couple, I don't- I found it hard to visualize them together or at least care about their relationship, you know? On Honestly, I don't really know what was going on with Juan like running in the Grand Canyon or whatever. Don't really know what that was about. Like getting over his issue. Like I wish I could go for a 20 hour run and almost die multiple times uh, and then immediately be solved of all my problems, all my um, mental strife and stuff like that. So <laughs> it wasn't mentioned in the book that he's training for this sort of thing, like that he's well trained for marathons or kind of like adventurous day like day long runs like an Ironman or something like that. It just says that he likes to run for many hours. I think running for many hours and being able to do a 40 mile run through the Grand Canyon is kind of different so I was a bit confused about what was going on there but it was a it was honestly it was an interesting thing to throw into the book so I was kind of interested to see what was going to happen. I still really dislike Anna's sister as a character. She was a uh, not a good character, not a good person, certainly not a good sister. Uh, mostly just a good daughter to her parents. Uh, so at least she has that going for her. And I think the relationship that was resolved with her mother was a bit of a cop out, but um, better than nothing. So I'll take it. And honestly, I think the romance was since it was kind of swept under the table, I think the ending was fine. I didn't really care about the romance, unfortunately, in this book. So the fact that it kind of ended very quickly wasn't really an issue with me. So yeah, and um, 
Anna's recovery from her uh, mental health issues over the like long period of time. It was very fast, quickly wrapped up after the second part of the story. It happened very quickly, but I think in a summary manner, it was handled okay. And I think I got the gist of like the end of the story. I don't think I was too unhappy with it, honestly, but I would have been happy to read more because I mean, the whole 90% of the book is her struggling, very, very deeply struggling with issues that she has, whether it be with her music or her her relationships in her life or like finding out about this autism or just like working through her own personal things. She like was always going through something. And of course the situation with her father was a huge thing that uh, put a very, put her, put her in a very bad place. That and her situation with her family and kind of the way that she went through it. So yeah, she probably felt more comfortable just quickly wrapping it up like how much more is there to talk about with Anna struggling and defining the issues it's more about healing and healing sometimes takes a really long and arduous 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 uh maybe it was easier to just kind of wrap it up quickly like she did in the the final few chapters it was an it was an interesting journey i'm not super happy with the book i think that the writing was good i don't know if the story was perfect but i mean knowing that it's part of the helen huang's life and her own experiences it doesn't seem right to judge it based on the story for me so based on writing and it being a romance i would say that it's like three stars which is fine with me if that sister character wasn't in there i think it would be a lot i think i would honestly give it a four star but i don't I just really don't like uh, Priscilla as a character. She kind of ruined it for me, unfortunately, but yeah. So overall, the Kiss Quotient trilogy, I think it was a pretty good um, series, honestly. My favorite book out of the three was The Bride Test. I think I would give The Bride Test like 4.5 stars. Um, I think that the characters had the most chemistry, uh, Kai and Esme. Uh, I really liked Esme's character and I honestly liked Kai's character as well. The story went really fast for me. It was over like in the blink of an eye and I didn't get bored whatsoever. Uh, the Kiss Quotient was also good. It was better than I was expecting it to be honest and I liked the characters well enough. I liked Stella's character and I liked her character arc as well. It just got a little bit boring for me in the middle towards the end as well. Um, but it's still a good, a good book and a good read for a romance. So also 4.5 stars, I, I guess. Uh, I think the the series did a good job of like connecting the characters and the the stories pretty pretty well, and so I think that it makes for a good series of books. The Heart Principle was definitely a lot more serious. The Heart Principle also showed a lot of difficult things for some people to read and a lot of real things that go on in everyday life. A much more much more serious tone uh, for the third book in the series uh that doesn't make it bad it's just there's a few things that you should be aware of when you enter into the series like like mental health issues kind of toxic family situation uh hospice and kind of like health problems with the uh intimate family member uh stuff like that that you should be aware of just in case that stuff is um traumatic at all for you um, but it's still a good book, but I would say The Heart Principle is more about Anna's story than the romance, whereas the other two, The Kiss Quotient and uh, The Bride Test, are very much about the romance. It was interesting to start off this kind of reading vlog journey that I'm gonna try to embark on with this uh, grouping of books. I honestly thought they were gonna be different than they were. They were better than I expected. So if you're in the mood for a lighthearted romance with some pretty good chemistry, some pretty good uh, intimate scenes, I would try checking out the Kiss Quotient and the Bride Test. Um, Helen Huang also features some characters with uh, people on the autism spectrum. So I think uh, it was interesting to see people with autism represented. I think if you're in the right mindset to read The Heart Principle as well, I think it is a good read. Just make sure to check some trigger warnings before you read it. But if you like Helen Huang's writing, then it's probably a good choice for you. Thank you for watching this long ass video. If you have any thoughts that you want to share with me about the books, maybe something that I missed or I kind of skimmed over or anything else that you want to point out to me about books or soul or anything like that feel free to leave a comment or anything like that yeah so thank you for watching